morning. Welcome to Cathedral Faith Ministry on this morning. Amen. Amen. We'd like to thank each and every one of you who may be tuning in by the way of Facebook or YouTube. We just want to say thank you as well. And those of you who are here in the sanctuary on this morning, we like to say thank you as well. Y'all looking good this morning. Just need to give your hands a clap of praise this morning for the ones of here that look so well this morning. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading be coming from Psalms 100 on this morning. A very familiar scripture on this morning. And it read thus. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. I say, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Father, we come thanking you, O oh God, for another day, O oh God. Father God, for another day, Father God, that we hadn't seen before. So, Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for another week, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we want to say thank you for that, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we come, Father God, thanking you, oh God, for just being God and God all by yourself. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask this morning, O oh God, that you just come on into this place. Send your anointing, O oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we need you. And Father, we ask, O oh God, that you bless those, Father God, that just don't know you, O oh God. Touch them in a special way, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, bless our bishop, O oh God, on this morning. Bless our first lady, O oh God, on this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, God, give them, oh, God, what they stand in the need of, oh, God. Hallelujah. Bless those, Father God, in the nursing homes and hospitals, oh, God. Oh, God, we ask, oh, God, that you soothe their pain on this morning, oh, God. Hallelujah. Lord, be with our praise team on this morning. Touch them in a special way, Lord God. Be with our musicians, oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, be with the speaker on this morning, oh, God. Touch him, oh, God, this morning. Have mercy upon him on this morning, oh God. Father God, if we had 10,000 tongues, oh God, we couldn't thank you enough, oh God. So that's why, oh God, I keep saying thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise you, we honor you, we magnify your name, oh God. Father God, we just say thank you. Father God, we'd be so careful to give you the honor and give you the glory, oh God. We ask it all in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, we can lift our voices. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's set an atmosphere. Hallelujah. God, we honor you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. You, we lift your name up. Hallelujah. Your name is above every name that is named. And so we give you glory and honor today. Come on, come on, come on. Speak well of him this morning. Lift him up. Tell him, say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. So glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. 
came to save us. Come on, say, Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. And how I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. Sing it again. Sing, Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high.
Jesus, you, Jesus, you be lifted higher. Come on, we lift you up, we lift you up higher. We lift you in our worship. because the praise team sitting down. Let our king be lifted up. Can we stand on our feet and give our king a praise on this morning? Amen. Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be praised? Amen. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone in the house this morning. Good to see everyone in the house in person here um, in Irmo and everyone that's on mine. On Facebook and YouTube, we thank you for um, joining with us. Send a text message to someone and tell them we are live and the word is getting ready to come forth. To join as we get prepared for the word of God. Amen. Um, we give honor to our pastor and founder, Bishop Richard Johnson. I think he's on the way in now. And our first lady, Dr. Peggy Johnson. We thank God for them in their respective places. Um, we also thank God for 
Elder Donald, who's our speaker for this morning. And his wife is here with us. Good to see you. Sister Donald, y'all give her a hand. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for her. I'm um, going to do a few announcements, but before we do the announcements, uh, we did it last Sunday, and I just enjoyed everybody doing it. Just get out your seat and go find somebody you hadn't spoken to this morning and go tell them it's good to see you. Go greet somebody and tell them it's good to see you. It's good to see you in the house this morning. Amen. It's good to see you, Elder Donald. It's good to see you. Amen. Nothing like greeting the saints of God, ain't it? Amen. Amen. And while we're still greeting online, if you close to somebody, tell them good morning. Go brush your teeth. <laughs> get you some coffee. Get you something to drink as we get ready for the word of God. So good to be in worship again on this morning. Amen. I'm going to go through a few announcements while y'all are continuing to greet each other. Don't stop for me. I'm taking up some space here, some announcements. I hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July. Put your hands together if you had a good 4th of July. I know some people are still traveling for the 4th of July right now on the way back. So if you're on the road, on the highways, be safe. I was able to spend some time with um, my wife and my kids at the beach. Got my feet in the sand. It's been the first time in almost two years, which is crazy. Um, got my feet in the in the sand and actually got a chance to spend some time with my mom and my dad at the beach too So we had a good time. I was on the beach um, Listening to some oldies. I, I, I had an old soul on the beach. I was listening to some stuff that um, Bishop and first lady gonna act like they don't remember from the 70s <laughs> I was listening to some old stuff having a good time and it was some gospel in there too now y'all don't get all crazy you know, for, I had a little bit of mixture of both, but I'm not, I enjoyed myself. That was some good music back then. Can we be honest? That, that, it was clean. It wasn't nothing wrong with the music. It was something you can listen to and your kids can hear it and you ain't got to explain nothing. And I enjoyed myself. I said, okay, they had something to, some of what they were saying was the truth about this music back in the day. It was, a, it was, it was more positive, uplifting than it is nowadays, but that's a whole nother subject, man. All right. So again, everyone that's traveling, um, be safe on the road. Um, as you, we came down this morning, me and um, Brother Caldwell and the interstate, was, it was packed. It was full, expecting it to be even fuller um, this afternoon. We saw something today that I never thought I would see. Uh, Brother Caldwell can attest. I pulled up to meet him. Y'all know I tell y'all we, where we meet at, we see some crazy things. I took a picture, because y'all ain't gonna believe what we saw this morning. So I pulled up and I'm looking to the left. And see, it's a dog underneath the car. Um, but the leash is going through the window tied to the steering wheel. I was like, hold on. <laughs> they, they stopped at the gas station and had the dog taking a nap underneath the car. I was like, this is a first. The things you see at the gas station, me and Carl had a good little laugh about that. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Now, I know if we get back there and that dog is still under that car, then that means it's a different story. Amen. But yeah, it was, we, we, me, we got a good laugh about that this morning, Carl. We were like, what is, what's going on here? I took a picture, so I can prove it. All right, on this Thursday, <coughs> excuse me, at 7 p.m., we will have the book club finale. Anyone that's ever participated in any of the book club Thursdays, please jump on this Thursday at 7 p.m. We wanted to be collaborative to kind of talk about what we gained from the book. It was a great book, and if you didn't read it in the book club, go back and get it. Um, he's able by Priscilla Shower. Awesome book, awesome book. Perfect timing for everything that a lot of us have been going through in this season that we were reading that book at that particular point in time. Um, I didn't say it last Sunday, but um, Elder, excuse me, Elder, um, Brother Caldwell, Deacon Caldwell's wife, Sister Caldwell, had her conference the last weekend in June, not this weekend past, last weekend in June. Heard it was a great success, um, Sister Caldwell. Congratulations to you um, and the best of wishes in your endeavors in the future. Um, we, Tuesday night, we'll be continuing the summer Bible study series, um, Living My Blessed Life. How many of y'all have tuned in at all on the Tuesday? Okay, good. I want to be out there by myself in the summer. <laughs> this summer, um, this Tuesday at 6.45 p.m. Very important that you do what I'm, the next announcement. Um, 
if you are not subscribed to the Facebook page or the YouTube page, please take a minute and go online and subscribe. Why is that important? They are making some changes on Facebook as to, way, as to how things are pushed out, and it's not us, it's everybody. So example, we've gotten a lot of um, people that reached out and said they don't see the alerts when we go live. Um, and someone to say, yep, and Lauren to say, yep, it's, it's a problem, not with us, just us. They made some changes within the past month. So we can't control all of that, but if you are subscribed to Facebook or YouTube, the chances are better. And as we get ready to make or uh, produce our own website, so we can broadcast first from our website, then to Facebook and YouTube, we can control our own content. You won't miss anything. So please go to YouTube and Facebook and subscribe so you're not missing any kind of notifications. Um, Y'all might not realize it, but on the average, um, a, a Sunday, we probably reach about three to 500 people on a Sunday. So when people start saying that they're missing, y'all might not think that, but on a week, it's be average about three to 500. So when the notifications don't go out, people don't even know we have, we on, we're online. So a lot of people said they just stumbled up on the service or they catch it afterwards, but when we actually go live, they don't see it. So the best way for us to do this is, one, to create our own website that we'll go through first that we control, and then secondly, subscribing so the notifications to the best of our ability go out. And then lastly, um, we've been talking about it for a while, but we're getting ready to put some things in, in place in the fall. In the fall, we will be getting back to some more youth programs that we used to do, but we're gonna do it in a, a better way. So for our young people, I know y'all love sitting in church and looking at me on some Sundays or whoever's speaking, but we, we're getting ready to put some things in place that y'all will have some more content that's um, engaging specifically for the youth, and we will be going through some training that um, Dr. Johnson is putting together. This is what she went to school for. Um, so we're gonna be utilizing her um, expertise and what she got her doctorate degree in to get some training. So what does that mean? Um, invite some of your fr family and friends that have youth or have young kids, um, teenage and, and younger, and we plan to have some engaging content for them um, on the Sundays that we have youth church next door, amen? All right, y'all can make a little bit more. Amen. Amen. We Now, y'all, this is the thing about church. We have to make church engaging for young people because we all getting older. I hate to admit it. When I pulled up and I thought, I looked over and I was like, who's, who's driving Lauren's car? And Ethan was driving. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm getting older. I'm getting older. I remember when you was born, boy. And Ethan was driving the car, got out, and Ethan is like two feet taller than me. <laughs> We are getting older whether we want to acknowledge it or not, so that means we have to create content that engages young people. So the same way we came to Christ, we want them to come to Christ in the way that they need to hear it in 2024. So we thank God for those who have expressed interest. Uh, Brother um, Cedric Tucker is one of those who's expressed interest in working with the youth, um, but we got to go through some training first to have things done the way they need to. So look for that to come in the fall. Amen. All right, I'm done talking. I'm not speaking this morning. We have a, a very capable um, speaker. Y'all have heard him before, so I'm not gonna do no long introduction. It's gonna be two seconds. Um, you see him every Sunday behind me saying something positive, which I need, and I thank God for him. Uh, I thank God for him. Like I said, his wife is here, Sister Donald. She's been a great asset to me when I'm trying to work on things as it pertains to um, wellness and health. Um, we thank God for them being a part of the ministry. Uh, without further ado, uh, we'll bring up uh, Elder Robert Donald. I was, you know, I was calling you. We was trying to figure out your name. I said, is it Robert? No, I didn't say Robert. I said Ronald. I said Ronald Donald. That don't sound right. And Dad was like, it's Robert. <laughs> Amen. Put your hands together for Elder Donald. Amen. 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 First of all, I'll give on to the Lord. We praise and thank God for being in the house of prayer. Praise and thank God for Bishop on today, Bishop Johnson and beautiful wife, uh, Dr. Peggy Johnson, and my beautiful wife, we give on to her on today, too, for being here, and we thank God for everybody else here. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. So, let's bow our heads, first of all. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for being here. We thank you for all that you do. Father, we pray, Lord, that you may bless, Lord. Lord, we ask that the Holy Ghost may be in the place 
and you give us what we're in need of. Lord, you know what we need. So, Father, we look unto thee at this time that you may bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask everybody to turn to a particular scripture on today that's coming from the book of 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and, I say 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Peter 5 and 7. <clears throat> and we going <clears throat> redundantly say this particular scripture on today. <clears throat> and, uh, and we hope that if you don't get anything, you get this scripture in your heart and mind. That's the purpose of me talking about this particular scripture on today. And... Uh, <clears throat> It's in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and the seventh verse. It's just one scripture. It's one scripture, or one verse. One verse. It says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Now, a lot of y'all know about fishing. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm still trying to learn about fishing. It took me for years to try to learn how to cast. And I it seemed like everybody else could cast out there, could cast out there and throw it that far. When I would cast, it dropped right there. And, uh, and it, it, it was so simple. And, but it seemed like I just could not learn that technique. And the children, I mean, the young, everybody that was around me, the women were laughing at me. Everybody was laughing at me. Because I didn't, I, I was trying to cast out there. And I thought it was a necessity for me to, um, to, uh, to learn about fishing because uh, you have fishermen in the Bible. Jesus, probably the most intricate or the most important apostles, I mean, all of them was important. But the ones that basically around him all the time, they was fishermen. And uh, Jesus had to teach them that they, he knew about fishing too. And we're going to get to that verse. But this thing about fishing, I had in my mind as I was, as I was studying long years ago, that when he said cast, he mean all the way out there. And that's all I could think of. You got to learn how to cast because you're going to learn something. If you cast it way out there, it'll come back to you. <laughs> and so I place emphasis on learning about casting, casting. And I, I know Brother, Brother Gant knows a lot, a lot about fishing. And we talk about fishing. I'm learning as he's talking. All I'm doing is just grasping. I'm taking this stuff in because I, I really want to know. And he can tell you about fishing. He grew up fishing. And so Scott, she's from Goose Creek, as I understand. So they know about fishing. Now, y'all don't know why you're talking about fishing today. Because this verse right here, this verse right here is dealing with fishing. It's, it's, and and it, um, it amazes me that um, when this verse talk about fishing, it's only the word that the author used is only used twice in the New Testament. It's only used twice in the New Testament. This kind of casting. Now you're gonna see casting. And we learned, we used, we learned, I learned this in school that when they taught you how to, how to uh, learn Greek, they always talk about balo, bale, and bali, and all that means throwing. But he didn't use it like that this time. And it's something about he was trying to bring something across to us that is important to us. And I want y'all to look at this, this scripture with me even more. And I want you to say it with me. Cast all your cares upon him, 
for he cares for who? You. Come on. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Can you say it again? Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Come out, where are you going today? Amen. It's a very simple scripture, but it's a very meaningful scripture. And it's something that you can remember. Wherever you go, you can always come back, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this scripture. First of all, I'm going to talk about casting all your cares. Second, I'm going to say casting all your cares upon him. And then lastly of all, I'm going to say cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And I'm placing emphasis on this. Why I'm placing emphasis? I just want this to get in your being, in your heart, in your mind. You want to cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Now, first of all, I want you to understand, and I want you to consider with me how this applies to our lives. Isn't that something? Now, how it applies to our lives? First of all, we need to look at Peter, all right? The book and the man that wrote this, or he dictated to the, to the one that wrote for him. It is a tribute to Peter. We learn that in 1 Peter 1 and 1. Isn't that something? Yeah. Now, what is Peter? He's a fisherman. How did, he de- how did he come to be an apostle? Jesus called him by fishing. In Luke, the fourth and fifth chapter, starting at the fourth verse, and uh, we can turn to that. Luke, the fourth chapter, I mean fifth chapter, and and basically in the fifth chapter, and I'm going to play what is the fifth chapter, but in Luke, the fifth chapter, starting at the fourth verse, it says this. It says, this. it says, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, I launched out into the deep and let down, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drop, drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night long. Or we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down thy net. Isn't that something? Now, I was talking with Mike one day up here, and I was talking about fishing. And I've been telling y'all about fishing. You remember I was talking about taking this, this and throwing it out there. And I'm just thinking... That's how God wants us to be. You have to take all your problems and everything and cast it on him or cast it out way out there. And when you cast it way out there, it's in the sea of forgetfulness. And you don't remember no more, but, but it's on God. But to be honest with you, as I, I learned about fishing, there are four types of fishing. We learned in Moby Dick about spear fishing. And y'all know, you know, where you take the spear and you jug at the fish, you know. And then you take the gun and you shoot, spear it. Then they had a fishing, uh, what Peter did sometimes. People do rod fishing. That's what we do a lot, line fishing or rod fishing. And... One particular scripture in Bible, it talks about when he 
did do some rod fishing. Um, theologians call it the little knot. They call it St. Peter's fish. <laughs> well, uh, St. Peter's a fish. And that's in Matthew when Jesus asks um, Peter, um, to whom the king of the earth give honor to and to himself or to his people or something like that, to his children or to strangers. And Peter said to strangers. Then Jesus said, then the children are free. Then he said, you go out there because we got to give tribute and honor. We got to give tribute and honor to the kings of the earth. So you go out there, and when you go out there, you're going to do some rod fishing. Mm -hmm. And when you do that rod fishing, the fish going to take that hook, and then you bring him in. And when you bring him in, you're going to find a gold coin within the fish. Right. And you got to go ahead and pay the kings of the earth. Isn't that something? Now. Believe it or not, I know y'all do a lot of eating of fish and everything. That's where the tilapia comes in. Tilapia. I might be saying it wrong. Tilapia. Yeah. Tilapia. <laughs> yeah. That's where tilapia comes in. T the tilapia, believe it or not, he was back there. And he's known for um, taking his egg, taking, she's known for taking her eggs and putting it in her mouth. Um, she protects them, and then when they're born, even after they learn how to gather, play, and eat for themselves, they even come back to the mother and comes in and comes into the mother's mouth and protected by the mother. And the only way the mother could keep them from come getting out, I mean, um, from not coming into her mouth, and she'd have to warn them all, she would try to find something bright to put in her mouth, and that would stir the baby fish <laughs> from getting into the mouth. And that's the reason why that story came in, because Jesus, amen, he knew about fishing, and he knew that the tilapia would basically, would, would basically um, um, go after bright things to keep the baby fish out of her mouth when she wanted to go hunt or whatever she wanted to do. Isn't that something? Hmm. I'm learning. I learn a lot about fishing. I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to talk about fishing. And I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to talk about fishing. Hmm. And so, so he did rod fishing. But he also did a, a fishing that they call net fishing. And that's where, you know something, I've been thinking this thing all wrong all the time. The whole time he, that, that this particular text was talking about something, it was talking about net fishing. Isn't that something? I'm hell down, where in the world are you going? It talks about net fishing. Net fishing is altogether different. And and they do it, I think they still do it down around Charleston a little bit. And they do it, I know they do it because I, I see National Geographic. Now somebody say, why in the world are you talking about all this and everything? Well, I'm going get to get to it because the text is going to deal with it. Okay, net fishing is important. And the Bible talks about net fishing more so than anything else. All right, net fishing, what it is, it's a big old round net. And it has, and it has weights on on one end, the other end, on, on, on all around. And in the center, you got you 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 hold it in the center, or you put a string in the center. And so, it has the weights on the end of, of this circular net. And then what you do when you see the fish, you throw it. Interesting. 
and I have to sink down to the bottom. You know what you see? You see the blood of Jesus. He goes to shore. And when he dragged his daddy in and goes to shore, you have the rocks, you have fish, you have everything else. You might even have some gold in there. You might have a lot of stuff. But but that was net fishing. And and uh the Bible talks about that a lot. The Bible says Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So it's important for us to understand about casting. About casting. Yeah. Isn't that something? You got to realize everybody in church ain't going to be right. And never will be right. And some people going to be good and some going to be some people that ain't going to never be good. Because that's how the kingdom of heaven does. It brings in the good and the bad. It's some people, and I know Mike knows talked about this, it talks about those that sow seed. It's the same concept. Isn't that something? So when they come in, come in, you're going to have some saints and you're going to have some angels. <laughs> so you got to realize Everybody ain't going to be saved. I don't care what you say. But thank God they're in the house of God. Isn't that something? And Peter talks about that even in this, in this particular book. The book is written with, and to understand what Peter is talking about and what kind of people he's talking about, you have to go to the author. And that's what happened. Isn't that something? So he said that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly be? Isn't that something? The whole book also deals with suffering. It underlines suffering all the way through the book. The underlying thing is suffering, I'm sorry. The underlying thing is suffering, and it goes through the whole book. Count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, I know that's James, baby. But he said, be not strange when fire dots. When you encounter fire dot. And so the book is dealing with suffering. And it, it talks about suffer not as a thief or a robber, but suffer in doing good. Now, the book also talks about as it deals with this casting. Because remember, this is the fifth chapter, so he's trying to do a, a finale of what he has just dealt with. Isn't that something? And in this finale, what he dealt with, he teaches us in this finality. He said, cast all your cares. And that's what I've been dealing with, casting all your cares. Now, believe it or not, this word cast and, uh, and the Greek word of that, and I, I, would, uh, I, I mess it up every time I say it, so I won't even say it this time. It has to deal with having casting to throw or cast upon. It's like... Uh, it's like putting a blanket on a donkey. That's what they did when Jesus went into Jerusalem. Casting or putting something on something. Now, Elder John, how does it have to deal with, with what we, this particular text? Because when you put this cast or you put this on something or you put this or you're going to cast this on, it's not far out that it's close to you. Right? Because we learned about the casting that it wasn't talking about far out. It was talking about the big boy I told you. Now, how I know that? So now, how do you go to the talking about that? Because this particular word right here is only twice in Bible. It's only twice in Bible. 
It's another cat that you, you know, I said earlier, Balio, Balo, and all that. You cat. We, that's one of the first words we learn in Greek. Mm -hmm. But this right here, and I'm, I'm going to try to say it real quick. It says epi, epi, and I, and I say I wasn't, but I got to try a little bit. Epi, re, ep, epi, re, Epi Risa, and is having to cast a throw. And it's only mentioned twice in the Bible. Only mentioned. Where it was mentioned first time, where it was mentioned, it was mentioned when in Luke, the fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth chapter, and Jesus basically said, um, and he tells Peter in this Luke, that's where, where we at right now. He said, now when he had been speaking, in the fifth verse, and Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night long after Jesus told him. Now, and I, I should have read the fourth, fourth verse. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for the dry. Okay, and in the first, in the fifth verse, and Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down, you know what, the net. I will let down the net. Peter said, or Peter, Peter said after the Lord told him, um, Launch out in the deep. So that means they're in shallow water. Now, I want y'all to get this right here. They launch out in the deep. First of all, we as Christians, we need to learn how to launch out in the deep. Sometimes we're in too shallow water. When you want, want God to do something, you got to stretch out on faith. Isn't that something? You got to stretch out on faith. So you need to cast out. You need to you know, you need to cast all your cares upon him. You need to cast out. You need to trust in God. And so right here, he tells you in this particular verse, or he told Simon Peter, Simon Peter was a new disciple. He wasn't even a disciple yet. But he, he was hearing the word of God. And he was a fisherman. And he knew a lot about fishing. He thought he knew a lot. Guess, guess what? The great fisher, the great fisherman, I believe he was a great fisher. The great fisherman went down to the river and they caught him in the same way. So the greatest fisher in the world is about to catch. He said, first of all, he said, Master, we have told all the night long. Yeah. Nevertheless, at thy Word, we let down the net. If you read, you going and if you really read commentaries, oh, if you really read, you gonna really, he's really saying, I'm a fisherman. You might know about carpentry, but I'm a fisherman. I done worked all, we done worked all night long. We done labor all night long. And you mean to tell me that you're going to tell me to go out there mm, 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 in the deep because of the drought, drought is the catching, drought is the catching of the fish. To get a big catch and we done worked all night long? <laughs> yeah, you worked all night long, but you got to realize this great fisherman right here, I remember in the book of Psalms, it says, what is a man that thou art mindful of him, other than some man that thou visit him? Yeah. Thou hast made him a little Lord in the hand. Thou have crowned him with glory and honor. But thou hast given him dominion over all the beasts of the field, over all the fowls of the air. And what so passes through the sea. Was saying that the Jehovah God 
He's, he knows every fish in the sea. Isn't that something? He knows everything. And you can't hide it from him. Isn't that something? And what he's getting ready to show Peter, huh, I'm omniscient. I know all things. Yeah. Master, we have toiled all the night long. And here you're going to tell us. But nevertheless, that's one thing he did put in there. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Don't question God. If God tell you to do something, don't question God. If God said it, it's going to come to the light. Isn't that something? What you need to do, if he say cast, you need to cast. And I, 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 I say it, it's talking about this kind of cast. How I know it's talking about that because Luke keep on explaining to us. And Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Master, we have told in the sixth verse. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great. So they didn't throw it out there. In other words. them to do that. The Bible says they enclose a great multitude of fish. Count down six feet. Each one feet will blow it upon the water. It's going to come back home. You know what? When he had it, he was pretty strong up there a long way ago. And I can, I'm, not, I'm not a fool. But that's one song that stayed with us. Because it's, it was about giving. And when you gave and you cast your bread upon the water, it's going to come back home. God gonna bless you. God gonna bless you. Yeah. Y'all don't hear me. God gonna bless you. If you give, he'll give right back to you. Isn't that something? If you have faith in him, he'll bless you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yes. Isn't that something? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Isn't that something? And the Bible said that when they did this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. They had to get help. They had to get their other partners and everything. They had to get help. Now, the type of casting that they did is called sign of sin and sin. And Peter. And so, just casting what he was saying, cast all of your cares upon him. Say, so Lord, your hope and body and my temptation, I'm casting all the cares. In other words, excuse me, in other words, had to deal with you know what? anxiety. Your cares had to deal with anxiety. Y'all worry too much sometimes. 
You need to put your worry on Christ because he can handle it. Let me tell you. And don't tell me you're not worried right now. If you look at TV right now, everybody talking about Trump and talking about the president. Everybody, and some folks saying, I'm ready to leave right now. Some folks say, ain't no hope. But let me tell you, God got everything in control. And the Bible says, place all, all your emphasis upon God. Ain't no man can do nothing without God. Oh, he don't allow. And, and if he allowed, you can't do nothing about it anyway. But one thing, my hope is not in man. My hope is in God. So you're going to cast all your anxiety, all your, all your cares, all your problems, all your situation, all what you're going through. And you're going to stop worrying about it. And you're going to cast it into the sea. You're going to cast it into the sea. And guess what? He can take it and it can go all the way to the bottom yes. or the top of the sea. And you're going to tell him, this God is not yours. It's his. Yes. So you have that. And he's gone. It's not yours. But you got You got to let it go. <laughs> I know you don't want to let it go, but you got to let it go. Before he said this, in this particular text, he said, all yourself to the mighty hand of God, and he shall what? Lift you up. I think six verse has to deal with that. Humble yourself in the mighty hands of God, and he will lift you up. In other words, submit yourself to God. You know why you won't do it? Because you won't trust him. But when you trust him, yes. you submit everything to him. Yes. I'm beyond. People can do some things to you, but if you're in him and hungry, you can feed him. If he's thirsty, you can give him something to drink. Yes. Isn't that something? You know why? Because you ain't dependent upon, you're not dependent upon what you're able to do, but you're dependent upon what God is able to do. Yes. God is able to change. He's able to change anybody. Sometimes the person say, why I did this? I don't know why I did it. I don't even like it. <laughs> but see, when you put your trust in God, God can change. Our old pastor used to say, God bless the whole world just to bless the saints. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. So, when we look at these particular scriptures, we are going to what? We're going to cast all your cares upon him. Yeah. Come on with me. Cast all your cares upon him. Yeah. For he what? Yeah. Cares for who? Yeah. You. You. Let me live now. I'm going to deal with, for he cares for you. Cast all your cares upon him. And because, why? He cares for who? Now, the Greek translation, all the anxiety of you, yes. having cast upon him because it matters to him. That's the translation. Of the Greek. That's a pure translation of the Greek. It matters to him. You yes. important to God. Yes. yes. You important to God. Amen. And I don't care how bad it is, you might not have a dime in your pocket. Thank you, I've been there. I I I've been in a situation. I have been in a situation. Don't don't didn't know how no money was coming in. And sit at home. Them, and I think I probably fell out at the 
um, fat fell out of my house, came back to my house, didn't have no money come in, didn't know when it was coming, everything. And believe it or not, I, I call myself, I just say, Lord, I'm still trusting you and just believing in you and everything. In other words, I'm casting everything on you. I ain't going to even worry about this thing. And you go around, and believe it or not, I, I think I found $50. <laughs> <laughs> in a place that I didn't think it wasn't supposed to be. They had put there a long time ago. But see, God had his plan. You see what I'm saying? You don't know what God got in store. But you got to continue to hold on and trust in God. See, Peter was talking to people that think. He was talking to people that think. Y'all got to hold on. See, he just didn't say being born again, not to us, but see what the evil of You got to hold on a little bit. Yes. Yes. We just sing a song, hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. You know why? Everything going to be all right. Isn't that something? So we got to hold on. Because mm -hmm. yes. your change is coming. Yes. <laughs> your change is coming. And so we got to cast all our cares upon him. Yes. Not only in, in anybody, but upon him. Yes. Not on Grandma Sudi, Sudi, or Sudi, or Grandma who, but upon him. Yes. Not on what you got in the bank. You got to depend upon God. Yeah. <laughs> you can think everything all right. Let me tell you, you can think everything all right. You're strong and healthy. I know because I'm getting old now. And some, sometimes, boy, I feel so good. But the next day look like I can't, I'm, I'm on my back. But yesterday wasn't that. But today I'm on my back. You better trust in God. I'm young, young now, but life is like a baby. Yeah. Once you see it, and then it's gone. And I'm just yeah. young and old, still in the cemetery. From this right here to 107, 108, 150, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not just talking. I do know uh, a <coughs> man in refuge. So you got to trust in God. <laughs> COVID took out a whole lot of folk. A whole lot of folk. You got to trust in God upon him. Yes. Upon him. Now, now the last thing I want to deal with, cast all your cares upon him. <laughs> cast all your cares upon him. You know why? Because, because he cares for who? Now, why he cares for you? He tells you, Peter tell you, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. In this particular text right here, or this particular, excuse me, in this particular book right here, he said, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to offer sacrifices unto God is important to him because somebody got to pray why we can't pray yes. how are we going to pray we're going to cast everything we're going to put everything on him and when we put everything on him guess what it come back to us when the praises go up the blessings come down how hard it is I'm still going to if my body rack in pain, I don't know which way to go. I'm still going to say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Something to 
start to say you're about to die, well, I can't stop the death, but I can still say thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. I don't care what kind of trouble you're in. Always look to God. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that all right? And I'm going to leave you with this because it's the why there. And it's the why, amen, why? Because you are important to God. Yeah. When he started off, and I'm leaving you with this, and I want y'all to say it with me again, cast all your cares upon him for what? Yeah. Again, cast all your cares upon him for what? One more time, cast all your cares for him because he cares for you. All right, now I want everybody to say it. Come on. Cast all your cares because he cares for you. One more time, you cares upon him because he cares for you. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but it's a saying that if you tell a person seven times, what? He'll believe. Isn't that something? So, in hard time, I don't have a song. I don't know no scripture. I just have to cast all the cares upon him because he cares for me. Somebody say, boy, you crazy. I'm cast all your cares upon him because he cares for me. <laughs> Isn't that something? Man, you can't hurt me because God got me. I done cast all my care. You know, took my, you know, took my car, you know, took my house, you know, took everything I got. But Job, let me tell you something. Job had already cast all his cares upon him. And his, believe it or not, his, his ladder was greater than his fall. Isn't that something? Yes, is. God is a good God. Yes, is. Somebody say, the shops went down. The cattle was dead. Well, no, no. The children was gone. Yes. But his ladder was greater than his form. Yes, is. Isn't that something? Yes, Cast all your cares upon him. Yes, for he cares for you. I'm going to leave you like that. He cares. 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 I was going to leave you with a, with a particular song, but I'm going to leave that alone. Because he cares. He cares. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for that message. Amen. Put your hands together. That was a beautiful sermon. Elder Donna, you could have went ahead and sang your song. I was, I was wondering what you going to sing. You want to sing your song? Come on. You want to sing it? No, come on. Sing it. Oh, you going to sing it? Go on, sing it. Oh, okay. okay. Was, this is what I was going to do. Go ahead. Go ahead. And y'all know this well. Y'all know this well, but y'all can y'all know it anyway. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on and help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am warm. Through the storm and through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. That's all I want to say. Amen, amen. That was beautiful. At this time, we're getting ready to transition over into a communion psalm Sunday uh, mornings. Communion. Y'all can go ahead and bless the communion. You can get ready to go before the Lord. So many nuggets in that message. I have to get Elder Donna a lapel microphone uh, <laughs> that can follow you because you was you was working the the, the pulpit, <laughs> but the microphone was still here. <laughs> that was a beautiful message, though. Beautiful message. Praise team can give us a selection as we prepare. Oh, the 
blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Amen. Let us stand. I know all of us need something for God, but I always feel like when it comes to communion Sunday, this is a, a special time. I will, I will put something on your heart that you're asking God to do for you in your life and the life of those that you love. For some, it might be healings. For some, it might be deliverance. Um, but this is the time that we can come to God and we can put it before him knowing that he is able. And I said it before when we did communion. Um, before you, we're going to read the scripture. And I'm going to ask Elder Donner to come pray before we read the scripture. But put in your heart what you're asking God to do but before you take the communion believe God that he's going to do it and that he's going to answer your prayer before you even put the cup to your lips or eat, take the bread this is a moment for deliverance this is a moment for us to receive healing in our family in our family's lives in our lives and I don't know about you I'm trusting God and believing God that he's going to make a way out of no way he's going to intervene he's going to open some doors and do some things that we've been asking him to do. And I believe that he can do it starting right now. Amen. Elder Donna, if you could bless the community. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for being so good, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this particular time. You said do this in remembrance of thee. So we give you glory, praise, and honor. Lord, we do this to glorify your holy name. As we are partaker, let us be partaker of what you have done. We thank you. We thank you. Bless the church as a whole and bless this part of the service. Father, we pray this in your name. Bless this table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 reads, For I received from the Lord um, that which I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and him when he had um, giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So you can tear off that top layer and break the bread. Say the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And take it when you believe that whatever you're asking God for is found right here in the bread, in the body. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I'll tear that last layer open. Drink the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we believe in you for healing, deliverance, in Jesus' name. For as often as you eat bread, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's give God a praise for the deliverance and the healing that we're asking him for, that we're believing him for. Open up your mouth and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Lord, anything that's wrong in our body, even the things that we don't know, Lord, we give you praise right now for healing and deliverance. Be healed, set free, and delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you in advance. Some of us dealing with things and we don't even know we're dealing with, but God, we claim the victory over it right now. Someone's got somebody in your family that's going through something in their body right now, but we claim deliverance right now. And we don't have to wait for it to be done. Lord, we know how to give you praise in advance. We know how to open our mouth and worship you in advance of the blessings and the deliverance that we don't see. But we know through your word and your body and your blood that it's coming. It's coming to pass. It shall come to pass. Come on, somebody. It shall come to pass. It shall. If you ain't sick, praise God for somebody who is sick. If you're not in the hospital, give God praise for somebody that is sitting in the hospital. Because it could be you. But yet, by the grace of God, Lord, we thank you that your blood covers. Send your blood to the nursing home. Send your blood to the hospital. Cover somebody right now. Touch somebody's body right now. Someone's recovering from surgery. Lamont's recovering from surgery. We cover him right now in the name of Jesus. We cover him under the blood. Lord, we command healing in his body right now. 
we command healing in everyone's body right now lord we give you praise we give you honor right now we give you honor right now we give you praise right now lord in the name of jesus bless us keep us be healed be set free and be delivered be healed be set free and be delivered and for these things we're going to forever magnify and praise your name we're going to forever magnify and praise your name. Open your mouth and show them what magnify and praising looks like. Lord, we thank you. This would not be just another communion service. We're going to get a report of somebody being healed, set free, and delivered. Someone's going to be healed, set free, and delivered because of the first Sunday in July. Lord, we give you praise in advance because we know you do all things well. And because, because we believe it, we say it is so. It is so. It is so. In Jesus' name, put your hands together and give him a praise. Put your hands together and give your God a praise. Is that the best praise y'all got? Give your God a praise. The one who woke you up this morning. Amen. Amen, amen. You don't have to stop worshiping because we move into the, the final phase. Of, you don't have to stop worshiping. I don't know what you got going on in your household. You praise him for what you expecting God to do. Don't stop for me. There's no wrong or right time to praise God because I'm not with you when you're up in the midnight hour. I'm not there. I'm at my house walking around up in the midnight hour. Give God praise and honor. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your people. We thank you for your people. At this time, without changing the mood again, continue to stay in the mode of praise. We're going to lift our offering. This is good seed. This is a good ground. This is a good place to sow. Uh, we're doing things in the ministry here that are, going to, that are going to impact the community that in which we are in. So when you give, give liberally, understanding that this is good soil. Um, that God is here in this house. Um, Brother Cedric, if you could come bless the offering. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for the spirit that's moving in this place today. We thank you, Lord God, for the sermon that cast our cares, Lord God. When we cast, speak things into existence and believe that God is going to make a way. Don't worry about what the stock market is doing, what they're saying on the news. We just have to cast our cares and trust that the God is still God. He is still the wonder worker. He is still a provider. He is still a healer. And he is still a deliverer. The ways to give should be on the screen. Now, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for this work and this ministry. We ask you to bless all those that are able to give and have the desire to give. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Ways to give are on the screen. And you should see those. Go ahead. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. One more time. I'm singing. Glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name amen amen we thank you again everyone that's online facebook and youtube for joining us on, on this morning um we'll see you we'll be back again tuesday night at 6 45 and next um sunday at 10 a.m here live in the sanctuary we thank you for your giving we thank you for being a blessing to the house of god at this time we're going to bring back elder donald as he closes out with um benediction yeah Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for being so good. We thank you for this week. 
Lord, we thank you for everybody coming back home safely. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done this week, giving some rest. But, Father, we just want to give you the glory and the praise. So, Father, we thank you. At this time, Lord, we just want to give you by honor. And so let us raise our hand. May the grace of God rest and abide with us. Let us all say, 